All right. So, so for the people that haven't been a part of the project, I think there's only three of you. So this is the kind of the final presentation for uh, senior studio pre-production. So this is the game that we want to start pushing for next year. Um, what they're going to present today is a little bit of the overview, kind of the original pitch for you guys to kind of see where it started and where it came from, and then ultimately show the in-game prototype that they've been working on for what, about two, two and a half weeks or so. Yeah. So you should see some, some of the gameplay start to come together. Uh, the pitch should kind of give you some context. It's mostly cubes and kind of rough shapes moving around, but it's, it's here to show what the minute to minute gameplay can feel like. So they've been busting their butt. This is where I switch from kicking them around to being their advocate and say, you know, this, this project is really starting to take shape. Uh, I'm proud of the work they're putting in. They've already talked about summer work, which is which is awesome. So the team's really starting to gel. So I'm really excited to see this and kind of show it off to you guys to get a, a good feel for you know what we're up to and then how how this is going to play out over the next year. So Greg, you're going to be a big part of this, obviously, with Senior Studio. Uh, Barnhart, it'd be great to start pulling audio people into this stuff so we can push the, the level of things a little bit higher in, in senior projects. So I'm really excited to see you guys see what you think. Um, and then Colin is joining the project, but he wasn't part of Senior Studio. So this will be the kind of the first time he ever sees the thing he's going to work on all next year. So there you go. We are going to start with kind of the, the, the pitch deck here. All right, so hi, I'm I'm Jay, and uh, Christian Stringer is going to be helping me present this. So our game's working title is Polterheist. So uh, band together with your ghoulish old friends and engage in trickery and spectacular mishaps as you fend off the living and protect your prized possessions from their mortal clutches. Possess the remnants of your own ho your old home and embrace a physical form once again as you slam the door break the chandelier, ring the phone, or whatever it takes to frighten your unwelcomed living guests. So you've lived an adventurous life with a, a party of adventurers like you. You've defeated enemies, you've created legends, and you're known throughout the land. But like everybody, uh, you kind of died, and now you haunt your former home, and your legends have reached far and wide, and new adventurers have come to storm your home and steal your hard-earned treasure. So your party bands together for one last eternal adventure is to scare those intruders out of your house. So we want this to be kind of like an E for everyone game. So like anybody can pick it up and we want it to be for like families and casual players and parties, kind of like how Jackbox is sort of that way. Uh, the genre that we have is, it's mouthful, but it is a split screen co-op arcade game. So, you know, you can just pick it up and it's split screen and you work together and our platform is console mostly focused on like controller support so kind of the general theming of of the location is a haunted mansion so it's like a old victorian mansion mostly like the hallways in the lobby will follow that victorian look with maybe some rooms that are like kind of filler uh, but a lot of the rooms will be themed to like different genres. So you could have like a garden or like a magic show or maybe something that's like Egyptian. Uh, like I said, there'll be some generic Victorian rooms that will fill it up and kind of the animation style we were inspired by for this to kind of play back to kind of like Scooby-Doo is like, you know, the squatch and stretch and like, oh, you get so scared, your soul falls out of your body kind of thing. Kind of like Tom and Jerry or Scooby-Doo, like I said. So mechanically, the ghosts, they'll fly through walls, they'll possess and control objects that are throughout the map, but they have a stamina bar which limits how much, how often they can possess things and for how long they can. The art direction we were going for is we want them to be rounder and softer, but and less humanoid, but they still have like things on them that tell you like who they are previously or kind of like notes to it like a hat or like a necklace or something like that and now i will pass it off to christian for enemies mechanically they're going to be searching the mansion and looking for your treasure um however different types of enemies will have different levels of uh of being frightened so some enemies are going to be much more easily scared off all others are take a little bit more tough or a little bit tougher might take a little bit more teamwork between you and the other ghosts 
uh, once they find the treasure, they will take the treasure and try to escape the mansion. So it's your job to make sure that they don't get further than the, than the door. Uh, they will carry flashlights as they're exploring the house. Not every enemy, but some will. And those flashlights, if you get hit by it, it will drain your ghost stamina, which can knock you out of your possession. All right, for the enemy design, they're going to be much more angular. And uh, this is to contrast the more uh, soft ghost design and kind of show that these are the guys you're trying to be stopping. Uh, longer proportions, larger. They're still cartoony, but in a more realistic sense, a lot more human features. So as I said before, some are easier to scan than others. So you can see that represented by the character design. Uh, for our animations, we want to go with that Scooby-Doo kind of look that Jay mentioned earlier, and uh, this will also help to dis distinguish from the easier to scare enemies versus the harder to scare enemies. So easier to scare enemies will obviously move a bit more like Shaggy. They're kind of timid. They're having a difficult time coming through, and as and the slightest spook will send them uh, sprinting away. Whereas Fred will be a bit. He's a bit more experienced, so he will be a little harder to scare away for someone who has his type of uh, his type of design. For our environment camera, um, our environment art direction is just a blend of the ghost and enemy art styles, kind of combining the best of both worlds, coming out to a more Animal Crossing like a uh, like a environment. Uh, we've also used Luigi's Mansion as a pretty good reference for the type of environments that we want to uh, look at. And the camera is going to be third person split screen over the shoulder, and this will just allow each individual each individual to have a more independent movement throughout the level. These are just some examples of rooms that we might include in terms of theming. So we have the obvious Victorian house on the top left, and then Egyptian, and uh, some kind of mine situation where maybe you go through the house and you find a mine that you can explore, and then just maybe a more grander castle. So this will just kind of add some variety to the level so that and a little bit more variety to the props and just make it a little bit more interesting and give us some other ideas for, for where to go to it. And it allows artists to kind of have a bit more freedom and kind of pick their thing for them to create so if maybe a victorian mansion isn't like their direction they might be like well i'll work on the egyptian tomb because i like all the gold and stuff like that that'll be a nice way to add some personal touches to it uh this is what we kind of want the textures to look like obviously sticking with that more cartoony style um just a little more, more stylized which will be more difficult in the long run i think to do but i think it'll be good practice for everybody and i think with the amount of preparation and time that we're putting in this it'll be very attainable so all right this is our game loop so at the beginning uh you will get a summary of what you're of what you're about to do you'll get to pick your level and choose things like that have players join the match and then uh show where which level they're going to be going into so once the level starts, uh, the uh, enemy explorers show up and they'll begin to search the mansion and attempt to leave with the treasure. So at this point, you can use consumables that you may have earned throughout, uh, throughout previous rounds, or you can begin to possess props and try to actively scare off the enemies. So uh, after that, the round ends. And if you successfully scared off the enemies, then uh, you may unlock some new props, uh, which I'll explain here in a minute, or, and then uh, go back to the new go back to the next round. Go ahead and play through that round again, use consumables, do all that again. Uh, but if the round ends with the enemies escaping with the treasure, the round, the game ends and you have to go on to the next, go on to the next level or retry. So mechanics. So ghosts are able to possess and control certain props around the map. Some props will cause enemies to run while others will cause enemies to freeze. This is just to kind of put a little bit more strategy into which props you're choosing at which time and add a little bit more teamwork with how you uh, how you go about trying to scare off your enemies. Uh, props will deal varying amounts of fear and paranoia damage to enemies. So uh, spooking is coming up to enemies with a prop. And uh, what this does is it causes the paranoia meter to rise. And as the paranoia meter rises, it'll make it It'll make it easier for the enemies to be scared off and actively running out of the mansion. So paranoia increases as you spook them, and then fear is when they're running away from you. All right. For some examples of props that we want to have in the game, uh, dynamic props are able to be moved around the map freely. So when you possess these, you'll be able to move throughout the rooms and uh, kind of try and find people in which to haunt. So this is stuff like a book or maybe like a, a mummy if you're in an Egyptian 
in an Egyptian setting. Uh, static props are locked in place, and these are ones that you might be a little bit more powerful, but you're unable to move them. So they're a little bit more situational on how you use these. So this is like a lamp, chandelier, uh, maybe a suit of armor. So when they walk by, you have to you drop an axe in front of them and scare them that way. Um, for view and scouting, which this allows players to have vision throughout the map, we've been uh, we've used paintings. So the player possesses the paintings, and then like in Scooby Doo, uh, eyes come out of come out of other paintings throughout the house, and you're able to see parts of the map and kind of scout out for your friends. Uh, teleports will instantly move players throughout the map. So this is the telephones that we've added into the house. So that's pretty self-explanatory. As the rounds progress, higher tier possessions will be unlocked. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, like you might get like mummies or suits of armor. Um, and each of these uh, take varying amounts of stamina. So uh, it, it makes it a little bit more risky to go for some of those higher tier uh, possessions. All right, for the consumables, enemies will drop power-ups when scared away. Collected power-ups go into a shared inventory so they can be used by all players uh, when it's most beneficial for everybody. Um, and some of the examples of power-ups that we've had that we have in our presentation is a stamina boost, which refills the stamina bar completely, and a speed boost, which in play which increases the player speed. All right, and that's our main pitch for the game. All right, can everyone see? I'm gonna put that in the middle. That seems fair. That's where stuff is. That you're right. Can everyone see? Yes. Yes. So you can use this with both a controller and a keyboard. So it's just a matter of which one you plug in is the order. I'm on the left side, Elijah's on the right. You'll find a little telephone. You can use this to teleport between rooms. Because the maps are a little big and the ghosts are too slow. Yeah. So you have to take advantage of that to do good crowd control. Uh, currently, the enemies are trying to find the treasure. And they will eventually get there. And since we can't scare them, they, they, they will succeed. So currently, the general gist of the game is to show off the uh, enemy search dynamic, which allows the enemies to go around and find treasures, which uh, currently is a one golden goblet. I found it works. Uh, the fundamentals of this are there. And um, once we have some good art and some more time to kink out the bugs and we're not in finals week, everything will be a lot smoother. Yeah, and I, I'm very proud, actually, of what everyone here has accomplished because everyone here has worked really hard despite the fact that we're in finals week. It's been very uh, time heavy. Uh, I know a lot of us have stayed up way past midnight um, working on this. And I do want to just say thank you, everyone, for contributing what you did. Yeah, we had a team of four to six people that stayed up all, the, all of last night making the build for this.